Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. Elon Musk is developing a vehicle that could be a game changer for space travel. Starship, as it is known, will be a fully reusable transport system, capable of carrying up to 100 people to the red planet. The founding ethos of Elon Musk's private space company, SpaceX, was to make life multiplanetary. This is partly motivated by existential threats, such as an asteroid strike big enough to wipe out humanity. Settling other planets would place some of the eggs in other baskets, sparing human civilization if one of them were to experience a cataclysm. In 2016, the entrepreneur outlined his rationale at an international conference in Mexico. History is going to be bifurcate, along with two directions. One path is we stay on Earth forever, and then there will be some eventual extinction event, he said. The alternative is to become a spacefaring civilization and a multiplanetary species, which I hope you would agree is the right way to go. Musk has often spoken about his dream of building cities on Mars. He believes that settlements would need large numbers of people in order to become self-sustaining. And for this ambitious dream, Musk and SpaceX have been working to build the Starship launch system, dubbing it the Gateway to Mars. But what would happen if someone else beats them to it? Well, this is a possibility that the world might have to account for, as Russia is building a nuclear-powered spacecraft that can transport heavy cargo into deep space. Elon Musk and SpaceX might not be leading the reusable rocket space race for long. At least, not if Russia has anything to say about it. Russia's Kaldish Research Center has been working on reusable rocket solutions for nearly a decade now, and now it's ramping up the hype with a new concept video showing how its spacecraft works. Speaking with reporters, Vladimir Koshlakov explained that Elon Musk and SpaceX's pose no real threat to the group's plans. Musk, Koshlakov says, is relying on technology that will soon be antiquated. While Russia is looking towards shaping the future of spaceflight, the Russian researchers say that their nuclear-powered rocket platform will be able to make it to Mars seven months after launch and that its reusable rocket stages can be put back into service after just 48 hours. Reusability is the priority, Koshlakov reportedly said. We must develop engines that do not need to be fine-tuned or repaired more than once every 10 flights. Also, 48 hours after the rocket returns from space, it must be ready to go again. This is what the market demands. Since SpaceX is currently the biggest name in reusable rocket tech, the topic of the competition was brought up by reporters. Koshlakov's answer is somewhat predictable, but nonetheless interesting. Elon Musk is using the existing tech, developed a long time ago, he noted. He is a businessman. He took a solution that was already there and applied it successfully. Notably, he is also doing his work with help from the government. This is just the latest shade thrown on Musk from scientists in Russia. Last year, the director of Russia's top spaceflight contractor made some rather harsh statements, asserting that SpaceX's boss was crazy if he thought that SpaceX would be able to send paying passengers on trips into space. More than half a century after NASA successfully sent the world's first nuclear reactor into orbit, Russia is moving forward with its plans to launch a nuclear-powered spaceship into space. It'll take quite the spacecraft to travel from the moon to Venus and then to Jupiter over 50 months in deep space. Russia's space agency thinks their nuclear-powered transport and energy module will do it in 2030, reported TAWS, the Russian news agency. Together with the Russian Academy of Sciences, we are now making calculations about this flight ballistics and payload. Roscosmos Executive Director for Long-Term Programs and Science, Alexander Bloshenko, told reporters, according to TASS, the mission, Zeus, will start at the moon, where a spacecraft will separate from the transport and energy module, or TUG, before heading to Venus, where it'll deliver another spacecraft and perform a gravity assist maneuver, before finally reaching Jupiter. If successful, the tug will be the first of its kind in space, allowing for transportation of large cargo into deep space. NASA, which most recently tested a nuclear reactor for spaceflight in 2012, is still soliciting proposals for nuclear electric and nuclear thermal propulsion that could propel a mission to Mars, potentially putting the first man on the red planet.
While NASA's immediate priority is returning humans to the moon with the Artemis program, we are also investing in tall pole technologies that could enable crewed missions to Mars, says Jim Ruter, Associate Administrator of NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate. In a release earlier this year, we look forward to seeing what innovations the industry offers in nuclear propulsion as well as fission surface power via a forthcoming request for proposals for that technology. Roscosmos, Russia's federal space agency, announced Saturday that it's space tug, the term for a spacecraft that transports astronauts or equipment from one orbit to another, is scheduled to launch on an interplanetary mission in 2030. The spacecraft's energy module, named Zeus, is designed to generate enough power to propel heavy cargo through deep space. It's essentially a mobile nuclear power plant. Several countries have their eyes on similar technology as a way to shorten trips into space. Right now, spacecraft rely on solar power or gravity to accelerate, but that means it could take more than three years for astronauts to conduct a round-trip visit to Mars. SpaceX's new Starship and Super Heavy rocket use the Raptor engine. Liquid methane and oxygen is the fuel for this engine. No other rockets have ever used methane as rocket fuel. It's because methane is cheap. A passive cooling system is enough to store methane in liquid form, significantly denser than hydrogen, storable for a more extended period of time, and does not leak, does not require insulation on the fuel tank, and the rocket design is less complex compared to a hydrogen-powered rocket. NASA estimates that a nuclear-powered spacecraft could shave a year off that timeline. The US hopes to put a nuclear power plant, a 10 kilowatt reactor integrated with a lunar lander, on the moon as early as 2027. So far, however, NASA has only sent one nuclear reactor to space, on a satellite in 1965. Other spacecraft, like the Mars Curiosity and Perseverance rovers, are also nuclear powered, but they don't use a reactor. Russia, meanwhile, has put more than 30 reactors into space. Its Zeus module would advance those efforts by using a 500 kilowatt nuclear reactor to propel itself from one planet to the next, according to Russian state news agency Sputnik. Russian engineers began developing the Zeus module in 2010 with the goal of sending it to orbit within two decades. They're on track to meet that mark. The entire mission would last 50 months, a little over four years, according to Alexander Bloshenko, Roscosmos Executive Director for Long-Term Programs and Science. During a presentation in Moscow, Bloshenko said Roscosmos and the Russian Academy of Sciences are still working to calculate the flight ballistics or trajectory as well as the amount of weight it can carry. The mission may ultimately be a precursor to a new frontier of Russian spaceflight. Sputnik reported that Russia is designing a space station that uses the same nuclear power technology. With this, we have come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think about the space race between Russia and USA down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until next time.